I don't know whether you've ever realized it, but the best advice that we can receive is always second hand, if not third hand, fourth hand, fifth hand, or goodness knows how many hands, because it's gone through generations where people have said the same thing over and over again. And, and when I'm reading the letters that Paul sent to Timothy, I realize that what's happening is that Paul is passing on advice to Timothy, that Timothy then has to pass on to others. But you know, that doesn't dilute its authority, it actually increases it. It's not just one person's opinion then, it's the advice that comes from the wisdom of generations. And to think, when you know all that Paul went through, all the experiences he went through you you just get a sense that that what he says really counts and that makes a difference so so when I'm reading in the the last uh, chapter of the first letter to Timothy and I discover that Timothy's being told to command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant this is in verse 17 and then goes on nor to put their hope in wealth which is so uncertain but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. It just catches my attention. I think this is incredible advice. And although it sounds really strong for a young man like Timothy to have to go to the rich people in the church and to say, now look, don't put your trust in these riches. They're just uncertain, they're unstable. You need to put your hope in God and you need to realize that God gives us richly everything for our enjoyment. And you think that is amazing. Because I can imagine some of these rich people think, you don't know what you're talking about, Sonny. You know, you've never had the kind of money that I've got. And if you had it, you'd realize that you need to depend upon it. But what is so great in this passage is that it's saying that, look, God has given us everything that we need and we can enjoy it, but we don't need to, to depend upon it. These are things that are added to us when we seek first the kingdom. They're not top priority. And as soon as we start prioritizing the things that are uncertain and putting our hope on the things that are uncertain, we're like the people that Jesus spoke about who were building their houses upon sand. Now, when you're reading this in 1 Timothy, you might think that this is a command that is a general one. And of course, it's good advice to everyone, whether they're in the church or out of it, but particularly in the church. You know, when we come to Christ, we know that we've been transformed. And yet there are things that can drag us back. And I guess that for some, it can be money that drags backwards and pulls us back. But just know, keep your hope in God. And he's giving us everything richly so that we can enjoy it. And just think that Paul said that to Timothy. And he was someone who went through so many difficult experiences. And yet he's saying that there was enjoyment. There was enjoyment in God all the way through because of the richness of his provision, the provision of his grace, his love, his joy, his peace. All of these things surpass the uncertain riches that some people want to put their hope in. So welcome second-hand knowledge, welcome third-hand knowledge. Just really appreciate the wisdom of the generations that's being passed down to us in God's Word.